In today's video, I'm going to be teaching us how to come out of worry. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tosi Opelua. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about worry. Even before COVID-19, a lot of people are used to worry. I used to be a warrior myself until I find this solution. I'm going to teach us in detail on what worry is and how to overcome worry. Worry, anxiety and depression are three in one emotion that has the power and the capacity not only to destroy you but to also destroy your marriage and destroy everything around you. As a matter of fact, worry, anxiety, depression has the capacity to kill your marriage faster than an affair. And that is why I constantly advocate emotional health for everyone. It is essential for you to have a stable emotion so that you can have shock absorber for situations around you that could tamper with your joy in your marriage. It is worry. Worry refers to those thoughts and images that we create in our mind, in our thoughts, that has potential consequences and could be at the same time be a potential risk to us. What's going on and why are you so anxious? Close to 7 million people are affected by generalized anxiety disorder, meaning they experience excessive anxiety that occurs more days than not for at least 6 months. This can include sleep disturbance, irritability, and muscle tension. Sometimes it's in uncontrollable manner. Sometimes you really can't control it. Sometimes you want to control it, but you really can't. You anxiety with. Most commonly you'll see anxiety disorders co-occur with a mood disorder. So anxiety and depression together mm -hmm. is a very common combination. There are theorists out there that actually think that the division between anxiety and depression is somewhat artificial. That it's similar processes in the brain and that in some ways it's just a manifestation difference where one person might become very sad, another person might become very worried. And in fact rumination is often a big part of depression so that's almost like difficult to tease out but we'll often see those two hanging out together what is rumination rumination is when you sort of get stuck in a obsessive rut of thinking typically about the same thing over and over and over again you can't let it go it could be something that happened at work and you can't stop thinking about it it could be a falling out with a friend and you can't stop weighing it in your mind an argument you had with a partner and you just can't break out of it for people it's normal for a little while to say god i wish i didn't say that or i wish that didn't happen or how could she have done that mm -hmm. but then over time other stuff comes and we, we sort of let it go and we move forward for a person who's ruminating they can't let go and they'll do that with everything it'll be did I look at that person the wrong way? Did I park in the wrong place? Did uh, Do you think they like me? Should did I say the wrong thing? It tends to be more self, in anxiety, it tends to be more self-blaming stuff. Did I do the wrong thing? Did I make them uncomfortable? So and most of the time, it arises from your risk analysis that is going on in your mind. Two things could happen when you're worried. You either you are either worried to solve a problem or you're worried to avoid a problem. So anxiety can actually enhance performance to a degree. It sets some stakes in there. And then again, if we are having a stressor in our life, it's appropriate to be anxious because it leads us to mobilize resources. We don't say, ah, I got an exam. I think I'm going to take a nap. We're like, I have an exam. I better study. I better focus. And it activates us. So that's normal anxiety. It's appropriate worry about the things in life and that when that issue resolves, we sort of let go of some of that anxiety and move on to the next thing. If we stay in a situation of anxiety for too long, almost like a, our sympathetic nervous systems, our fight or flight is activated for a long time, that's not good for our health. Mm. It releases stress hormones, it wears us down physically and psychologically. So there's a point at which when the thing we're worried about passes, that we let it go. That's normal anxiety. Let me quickly tell us about the difference between worry and anxiety. Worry happens in our head, anxiety happens in our body, and that's why you see people having panic attack. Panic attacks are also possible but slightly different in that they are sudden and short episodes of intense fear that trigger a severe physical reaction like accelerated heart rate, shortness of breath, and dizziness. In fact, anyone can experience a panic attack whether or not they have an anxiety disorder and it's not always triggered by something known or specific. While not- so it's, Your body is telling you that 
I am stressed because you're worried. Why do you worry? Number one, especially in time like this, you're worried because you are exposing yourself to a lot of negative information and this is not a time to really listen to negative information this is a time to really listen to the word of god i'm sorry if you are not a christian but i must tell you that if you are able to sit down and listen to the word of god take time to study what the word of god says against the situations around you it's going to be easier for you to come out of worry why are you worried you have unrealistic expectations especially in your relationship when you have unrealistic expectations when you have outrageous goals you might be worried and go into anxiety another reason why you're worried is because you lack clarity and you are probably confused another reason why you're worried is the fear of unknown the last reason i have on my list is the lack of understanding when you understand something you outstand it so there is every need for you to really understand what the situation is and that is why the bible told us to get understanding Proverbs chapter 4 verse 5 it says get wisdom and in all thy getting get understanding get it not neither decline the word of my mouth scripture is telling us that there is a need for us to get wisdom get understanding understanding will make you rise higher than you can imagine so how do you conquer worry anxiety number one you need to know what exactly you worried about number two ask yourself what is the worst that could happen most of the time about 70 to 85 percent of what we are worried about won't always happen number three share your worries with your spouse sometimes your partner does not know what is going on in your life and you just assume that they know other people around you don't understand what you are going through but you assume they know if you don't tell them if you don't share it with them they might not know problem shared is absorbed there is a need to share what exactly the situation is with your partner the last thing i have on my list number four you need to cultivate the habit of praying for example when worry comes instead of saying oh how am i going to pay this bill what am I going to do? Hey, the money is due again. Hey, you say, Father, thank you because I pay my bills. Father, thank you. Oh, there is no food again in the house. Father, thank you because I have abundance. The Bible says the young lion do lack and suffer hunger. But they that put their trust in the Lord will not lack anything good. The psalmist says, I was young and I'm hold have never seen the righteous forsaken nor their children beg for bread obviously I cannot beg for bread the young lion do lack and suffer hunger but because I put my trust in the Lord I will never lack anything good you need to load yourself with the Word of God so when worry comes you counter it with the Word of God and the Word is still working so rather than worrying and developing anxiety that will eventually affect your health because here is the truth whatever you are worried about is a season and the season we always pass away and that is why the Bible told us there is time and season for everything whatever you are going through whatever I'm going through today they will not be here forever there is going to be a solution there is going to be a way out but trust me the damages you cause to yourself through anxiety will be there after the situation is settled and like I said there will always be situations there will always be things to care about but there will always be situation that will call for worry but the truth is once you cultivate the habit of countering it with the word of God or with the right attitude even if you are not a believer even if you are not a Christian once you develop the right attitude towards your response 
because most of the time this worry we manage it the way we see our parents manage it if your parents are managing their situation or but you know what you can always create a life of your own you can always create a life for yourself this is what worry will do worry will weary you worry will weary the people around you worry will weary your relationship worry will weary your children what worry your worries will weary your neighbors even your worry will really worry itself there is a need for you to tell yourself you design a new way of responding to situation rather than worry and the two clear ways that i know that you can use to respond to worry is number one the word of god when worry come tackle it with the word of god be careful for nothing so they say why worry why worry when you can pray and worry come return it back with the word of god because the word is working thank you so much for watching till i come your way again bye now